Welcome to True North Nation. This was brought to you by Solid Rock Church in Irving, Texas, where we bring you true direction in a lost world. Now let's hear it from our host, Pastor Ed Stein. And thank you for joining us here at the True North Nation. We are so glad and excited about you being here for our last episode of 2022. We are excited about what God has done in us, through us, and because of us. It's exciting. We're going to be talking about the elements of success for our last episode here in 2022. We're ready to blast into 2023. We've got some great content coming up next month, starting just next week, from the survey that you filled out to give us for our series of Control the Beast to Guide to Manage Your Emotions. It's going to be fantastic. So get something to write with. Get a cup of coffee. We'll be right back. back. Thank you again for joining us here at the True North Nation for the last podcast of 2022. Man, we're so excited here. We are jazzed about what God is doing and ready to blast into 2023 with some powerful things. And so let's get started. We're going to be talking about the elements of success. But before that, I want to thank all of you loyal, loyal listeners for your faithfulness throughout this year. It's just been amazing. All of the great things that you have given to us, uh, compliments, comments, uh, just great. There's one in particular that I want to mention uh, here that we just got, uh, I think, through Apple uh, Apple Podcast Reviews, and it was uh, very complimentary. I was very touched, but also kind of uh, chuckled, and you'll understand why. Uh, the, the person, the listener said, great apostolic radio. Pastor Ed Snyder sounds like the apostolic Paul Harvey. There you go. The world will only give you a piece of the Chronicles of Christ. If you want to be apostolic, listen to True North Nation to get the rest of the story. Great content. Thank you out there for your list for the listener uh, that submitted that uh, review on Apple Podcasts. And of course, we always appreciate uh, those reviews coming in. If you could hit whatever platform you're on, give us a review. We'd appreciate it very, very, very much. All right. So let's get started. And of course, you know, uh, maybe some people will expect me to do this by let's talk about New Year's resolutions. Well, New Year's resolutions never works. Uh, why? Because it's set with a temporary thing in mindset. It, it's just like it's a New Year thing. And usually within 30 days, it's dead. It, it just doesn't exist. And so what we need to do something that's going to last. In other words, as many of you know, if not most of you, you uh, of my weight loss journey, uh, going from almost 400 pounds, losing 160 pounds, uh, getting back in shape and all of that. Um, I've been uh, I've been a, um, a plump guy most of my life. And so I've been on a lot of diets. Uh, diets come and go. Uh, we lose a bunch of weight and then we gain all of it back plus 10 percent. And we're more miserable than when we started. The key is it has to be a lifestyle change. So if you're out there and you're thinking about losing weight, go for it. But change your lifestyle. I haven't drank soda in over 10 years. I quit drinking soda. Anything that you can pour on a battery and clean acid doesn't need to be in my stomach. So that's just what I do. Uh, I used to be a pizza freak. I mean, eating a large pizza by myself, I'm down to a couple of slices. Uh, I've changed the way I eat for life. It's a lifestyle change. And not only have I lost the weight, I've kept the weight off. Uh, in fact, during the pandemic, I, I gained uh, 60 pounds because we were on lockdown. We were not going anywhere. Uh, didn't get out to exercise. The refrigerator was too close to me, and I grazed all day. But I just got the rest. I just finished up getting 60 pounds back off of me. Again, it's all about lifestyle. So I want to talk to you tonight uh, or today or whenever you're listening to this podcast of the elements of success. God wants you 
to be successful in whatever you do, especially your relationship with him, especially a ministry that God has called you to. He wants you to be successful in that ministry. And so there's elements that we have to build in, not in our New Year's resolution, but in the lifestyle change that we are uh, going to enact after the first of the year. So let's start with Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. The Bible says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables, and uh, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet to be uh, for an appointed time, but at the end it shall not speak, or it shall speak, excuse me, and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So we're going to be talking about goals, of course, because this is our last podcast of 2022. We're moving into 2023. Uh, I know here at Solid Rock Church, we are going into 21 days of fire. I'm preaching this Sunday on the 10X Church, how that we're going to be praying 10 times more, uh, reading our Bible 10 times more, fasting 10 times more, evangelizing and witnessing 10 times more. We're going to 10X everything, all of our ministry teams, whatever ministry they're assigned to, it's going to be 10 times what we used to do because we've got to grow a church. we got people that need Jesus. And so goals are a part of, of a vision. Now, again, let's get let's get real simple here. And and I want you to hang on to verse 2 of Habakkuk chapter 2 and the Lord answered me and said, "Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it." I want you to keep that verse in mind because I will be revisiting that in uh just a a few moments. All right? So, again, For all of those that may be just getting started, vision, what is it? Okay, a vision is a supernatural scenery or an event given while one is awake. That's the definition of the word vision. God can give us a vision, a vision for our personal life, for a vision for our own walk with God, a vision that maybe we might be involved in a ministry in a local church. Uh, We might be... Uh, you might be a pastor listening to this. God has definitely got to give you a vision for your church so, so that you can uh, advance. God can give us a vision, a goal, a set of goals to accomplish. We can pray. We can get a picture of what God wants for our lives. But getting a vision is a must. If you want to, growth to come to your life, your church, your ministry, whatever you're involved in, your family, you have got to get a vision. And again, a vision is really a set of goals. Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. So here we are. Vision produces goals. It produces hope. It produces commitment. It produces sacrifice. So we have got to create a vision. We have got to create goals. What do we want to accomplish? What kind of lifestyle change do we want to make in 2023? Now, some personal tips. Uh, I just went out and bought another new moleskin. Any office office supply place, uh, uh, Staples, uh, Office Depot, whatever, you can buy a moleskin, a nice notebook with good paper in it. And I have written out seven goals that I want to accomplish. Uh, these are personal goals, so I may not just give them all to you. Uh, one of them is to become uh, a, a greater pastor preacher. Okay. Uh, one of them is I want to become a greater prayer warrior. Okay. I want to work on those personal items. And then again, there are five others. I have also developed 
a book list, a reading list of seven books that coincide with the vision or the goal that I have set for me. So I want to be a better prayer warrior. Well, I have picked out of my library Kenneth Gurley's book about the prayer book. I'm going to read that book. I'm going to study that book to become a better prayer warrior. Okay, so again, don't just set a goal and say, hey, this is what I want to accomplish. Do something about it. Set in action a plan to be able to to accomplish your goals. So again, if you don't have a vision, a, a vision of being a prayer warrior, a better prayer warrior, a vision of being a better communicator, preacher, pastor, uh, a better mother, a better father, a better uh saint of God, member of your church, whatever it is, that's the vision. I want to become this. So the goals that you put together is going to help you bring your vision to fruition. Okay. Creating that vision. D.L. Moody once said, if God be your partner, make big plans, make big plans. If God's your partner, look, God can do anything. Can he not? God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He can finance what we want to accomplish because God is speaking the vision to us. And of course, in Habakkuk chapter two, verse two, the Lord said to me, write the vision you need to write now. No, let me let me touch on this. I I probably got it later in my notes here for the for the podcast, but I want to hit it now. Good goals are not good goals unless they are written goals. Better goals are written every day. What? Rewrite the same goals every day? Yes. Why? Because it keeps it fresh in your mind. When you write it out, it's going to help you memorize that. When you write it out, you can th- put some thought behind it and say, okay, what can I do today to become a better prayer warrior? What can I do today to become a better communicator, better preacher, better pastor? So it helps you think and then put the short-term plan into for the long-term plan. So again, write the vision and make it plain. Don't fluff it up and don't add a bunch of, you know, whatever to it. Just make a good, direct, this is what I want to do. And, and that he may run that readeth it. So again, it's important and essential that our dreams and visions. Now, listen, I'm going to drop something on you here. It's important and essential that our dreams and visions balance in accordance with God's scale. Okay. In other words, whatever goals you're setting for your life, whatever vision that you are getting for what you want to accomplish, make sure it's in the will of God. Make sure it's in God's scale because God has given us ability. He has given us drive. You're listening to a very driven man. I'll I'll admit to it. I am a driven man. And my wife, if she's said it once, she said it a gazillion times. My husband is goal driven. I go to bed at night and and talk to her about okay now tomorrow we got to get this and we got to do this and tomorrow we got to she's like would you please let me go to sleep well this is how I go to sleep I got to talk about what we got to accomplish tomorrow well okay I get it so I now I just kind of talk to Jesus <laughs> anyway so uh, again God's given us that ability and that drive we can do anything that we set our minds to do if you'll just set your mind that I'm going to accomplish this. The Tower of Babel proves that factor, that you and I have the ability to do anything that we set our minds to do. We've got to be careful. That is a very powerful element that we can use to accomplish, but it's also a dangerous thing because we don't want to step outside of what God wants in our lives. So if God gives you a dream, if God gives you a vision, some goals, that some people mock at, follow it anyhow. In spite of who the naysayers are, do it anyway. Oh, you can't accomplish. You know, I'm the type of personality, folks. If you tell me you can't do that, oh, buddy, you just lit, you just struck the match and to light my fire because I'm going to do it in, if for nothing else, I'm going to prove you wrong. All right, that's a little bit of me. But anyway, no matter what your haters and folks, if you're not doing something, 
I mean, if you if you don't have haters, you're not accomplishing. You got haters are a part of the equation just as much as failure is a part of success. So don't worry about the haters. If the haters are, are running their mouth, do it anyway. If God said it, this is what I want you to accomplish, do it anyway. Brother Wayne Mitchell, I don't know if you if you know him. You may or may not know him. Pastor Wayne Mitchell, pastor in Moline, Illinois. Phenomenal, phenomenal man. I preached. I, I was privileged to preach for him several times, several revivals through the years. He built his church on bus ministry and Sunday school. And he, um, I mean, he built a strong, powerful church. I mean, at one time in the beginning, he had like 300 kids and 50 people. But then all of a sudden, those kids grew up, got jobs, got married, had kids of themselves. And then pretty soon, there's a church of a thousand people of, of adults and children. So again, God told him, if you'll go after the children, you'll build a church. And he did. He bought buses and started bussing kids in from the projects, from all areas of town. He went to a, a conference, uh, uh, I guess a Sunday school growth conference, and one of the, you know, him and a, and a buddy of his went together and shared a room, cut expenses, all that good stuff. And so one, one evening of that conference, the preacher preached against bus ministry. In fact, said that bus ministry is of the devil. If people want to come to church, they'll get there. You don't have to provide a ride for them. And we're like, wow. And so when they got back to the room, Brother Mitchell's buddy says, well, Wayne, what are you going to do now? That guy preached that bus ministry is of the devil. He said, I'm going to go home and buy me five more buses, and I'm going to fill them up with people, with kids, because God said to go after the children, and we'll build a church. So again, folks, that's that kind of determination that you need to get if you're going to be successful in accomplishing your vision or your goals. So how do we bring about or receive the vision? First one says, watch, wait, and receive in prayer. Pray about it. Pray about your goals. My goals, I've got seven goals that I'm starting out with 2023, but they will change. And I will add to them because there's other areas of my life I'm sure God's going to speak to me that I need to improve on. Verse 2, write it down. Make it plain. In other words, cast the vision. Express the vision. Tell the vision. Keep the vision alive. Read your goals. Rewrite your goals every day to keep that vision alive. And if you do this, you're going to have success. You're going to accomplish of course, in creating and receiving the vision, investment of time. I cannot dwell on how much time it's going to take. For me, it, that, that, that messes me up. Oh, my God, it's going to take five years to do this? I can't think about that. I just got to I got to I got to uh, bury myself into it and drill down and go after it, produce, make it happen, whatever it takes. And then when I raise my head up and we've accomplished, it's five years down the road. I, I cannot pay attention to the investment of time because the way my personality is, is like, man, can we do it quicker? Can we do it faster? Well, sometimes good things come to those that wait and something that's worth doing is going to have a challenge to it. So I, but I also have to work as if I have no time at all. That's, that's the putting my head down and drilling in and going for it. So again, we've got to realize we have to invest the time. We got to do the work in order to accomplish our goals, but we also have to go at it with an attitude of, man, I got time. I've got to get this done and work hard at it. All right. Joshua chapter one verses 1 and 2, and then verse number 7, we're going to talk about leading and getting the job done. Now, verse 1 of the first chapter of the book of Joshua, the Bible says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, Thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the uh, children of Israel. Verse 7, only be thou strong 
and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which my servant commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, but thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, and then verse 7. So the advice that was given to Joshua was this, arise, which means don't just sit down and stagnate. Get up and get moving with your goals. The second piece of advice, go. Go means you have a destination to arrive at. You are on a mission. You have got something to accomplish in the kingdom of God. The next piece of advice that Joshua got, be courageous. That is to have a brave determination in the face of difficulty. Honey, if, you, if, you're, if you're not coming up against some walls, if you're not hitting some resistance, if you're not coming across some potholes, you've got something messed up. Something's wrong. You, you've got anything worth doing has got a fight to it, and it's going to be worth the victory. The, the bigger the battle, the sweeter the victory. You hear that. Be courageous. Draw your sword, which is the word of God, and go after it. Amen. The next piece of advice, be strong in the Lord, not your own strength. Not your own wisdom. My prayer every day when I get up and spend time with God is, Lord, give me your wisdom. Give me your direction. Order my steps. Give me your knowledge, your discernment. Lord, take me over and put me where you need me to be and let me meet who you need me to meet. Let my wife operate in your perfect will. Amen. Be strong in the Lord, not in your own strength. Of course, Joshua is also instructed is do not leave anything undone. When the Lord has spoken, do it all. Do everything that God says. There is no shortcuts. There is no, uh, you know, can't, well, we can leave this step out and get the same result. No, if God said, do this, do it. If God said, go here, go. If God said, make this happen, make it happen. Do the steps that God gives you to do. When David went, I believe it was David. Uh, yeah, I think it was David. He didn't make plans for battle. He went to the Lord to get the plan for the battle. Okay, remember what I said. Remember that. Get that in your mind. He did not make plans and take the plans to God. He went to God to get the plan. Okay? Now, here's something else that, that, that Joshua got in, in as far as to be successful in what we're wanting to accomplish for 2023. He said, look neither to the left nor to the right. What's that mean? That means stay focused. Stay focused. Do not be distracted. Do not be tempted to park it in a safe place. Just keep moving forward. Keep putting one foot in front of another. Sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you've been beat down by the circumstances. You're bloody. You're hurting. You're in pain. But keep moving forward. Don't stop in what you're doing. So, again, Stay focused. Don't don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. Stay stay on course. It is you know here here's something that we need to look at. It is when we are in the way of duty that we find giants. It's when Israel was going forward that the giants appeared, but when they turned back into the wilderness, they found none. As long as they went forward. Giants appeared. When they went backwards from where they came from, they couldn't find the giants. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, focus and keep moving forward. Don't ever give up on what God, oh man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Don't ever give up on what God has called you to do. Write the vision, write the goals, study them every day, do something every day to make those goals come to fruition. Make that vision a reality. 
We can give all kinds of excuses. Why not? Uh, too educated. Difference in doctrine. Uh, we can quit that and become motivated. Quit giving excuses. Well, the people are too educated. There's differences in doctrine. Uh, or we can just stop all that nonsense and just become motivated, set on fire, committed to the cause of Jesus Christ. Exodus chapter 32 and verse 29, and I know we're starting to get short on time, but Exodus 20, 20, 32 and verse 29, consecrate yourselves today, not tomorrow, today, to the Lord that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. If you'll consecrate yourself today, the blessing is going to be bestowed on you today. So we can't just write them, write them every day. We've got to be committed to the cause. We got to be committed. And the way we get committed is that we understand what commitment is. The definition of commitment, of course, is an act of committing to a charge or a trust. Webster says it's an agreement or a pledge to do something in the future, especially something that is pledged to do. Webster also says it's the state or an instant of being obligated or emotionally impelled as a commitment to a cause. I'm going to close our time together with this as a statement that was done on September 11th, 2001, just after the collapse of the World Trade Center and the attacks, the terrorist attacks on America that our then President George W. Bush in a speech to the joint session of Congress on September the 20th, uh, in response to those terrorist attacks, he said this, our nation this generation will lift a dark threat of violence from our people and our future. We'll, we, we will rally the world to this cause by our efforts and by our courage. We will not tire. We will not falter. We will not fail. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a powerful statement of commitment. So what if we apply that in a spiritual aspect of what we're going to accomplish in 2023? It's this generation. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So our nation, this generation, we're going to lift the dark threat of violence spiritually from the people of this world and from our future. We're going to rally the church to this effect, to this cause by our efforts, by our courage. We're not going to get tired. We're not going to be weary in well-doing. We're not going to falter. We're not going to fail. Amen. We will succeed Succeed because if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. So, folks, as we close out the last podcast of 2023, or excuse me, 22, and we launch into 2023, oh, folks, let's get some elements of success under us. Let's get the vision. Let's write the vision. Let's write the goals and make a lifestyle change that we're going to tear down the kingdom of darkness and build the kingdom of God. God bless you. Hey, I'm excited. God's doing great things. Don't forget, next week, we start our Control the Beast series from the survey that you gave to us. Oh, we've got some content coming at you. You will not miss. Every week, we'll be, we'll be broadcasting uh, a True North Nation episode from Control the Beast, the book. We also got some, some good content. One person said, hey, could you address church bullies? Could you address how do I handle anxiety and fear? Uh, one young minister says, how do I handle my emotions as a young minister and keep them under control? It's going to be great, folks. Stay close to our social media. Stay close to emails, text messages, and we'll see you next week. God bless. To find out more about finding that true destination, visit us at truenorthdfw.org.